And the radiologist came in and she told me that I needed to have biopsies in both breasts. Um, and so I asked her, what are the chances you think it's something like that? And I was fully anticipating, you know, 10% chance or 15% chance or something really low. And she said, I, I think it's at least 60% chance. And it was just, I felt like I'd been punched in the stomach. You know, I, it was unbelievable to me. I was by myself um, when I went for my mammogram. Of course, at 33, you've never had a mammogram. So um, I didn't even know what to do. And immediately they said, you know, we're going to need a we're gonna need an ultrasound. And then they said, how quickly can you come in um, tomorrow? From a week after my biopsy is whenever they found out I was stage four. My liver, my bones, and all throughout my lymph nodes. My doctor told me after, when I chose mastectomy, he said, well, you'll be cancer free if you have that, after you have that surgery. And I thought, oh, yippee. But I, Every now and then, these little thoughts would come to my mind. Suppose it comes back. And um, my son was eight at the time, and I'm a full-time working mom, and so it was a lot to take in. We shielded Cohen until we knew what to tell him, how to tell him, and really we kind of waited to tell him when we knew, like, I'd lose my hair. So we you know, made a big party about it and um, made it a celebration instead of something scary. And the, the entire time I was struck by where God was in all of this and I could see Him at work in putting relationships in my life. You know, I was put in contact with Project 31. The day that I was told I had uh, DCIS, I took it to social media and I was immediately put in contact with Project 31, so the day of my diagnosis. I've talked to so many women since I've learned about P31 who don't know about it, so I know that there's a need for greater outreach and stuff because I want other women to benefit the way I have from P31 and the sisterhood that's there and the support and the shoring up because at first I didn't really know what I needed, but that organization was there for me and I was really glad that it is. He's like, I'm not gonna put a dan I'm not gonna put a timeline on your life. We're just gonna keep being proactive and um, just getting them as they come. And, but it's also, you know, a realization that the medicine isn't crossing that blood brain barrier. So how long can that go on? And four and three months, just really like, blew my socks off, but um, it is what it is. But I had to remind myself that, you know, this body, yeah, maybe it isn't traditionally beautiful anymore or feminine or what, whatever society tells us, um, but this body is fighting really hard. And it's fighting because there's still things that God wants me to do on this earth. And that's beautiful. And we do have those hard conversations. I mean, I've had to say, he'll ask, Mommy, are you gonna die? I just tell him that's not the plan, because it's not. And that I will do anything that I can to be here for him. That That is the goal, but that I ultimately don't get to make that decision. It's made before me. And um, so I just try to make him understand that. Project 31 is really about community and about bringing those connections to be able to help in the now, not necessarily for research for the future, which is important when you're in the middle of the trenches.